Hey YouTube, welcome to Viking Preparedness. I am Pastor Joe Fox. I do not believe in panic, but when required, I do believe in very rapid, focused action. Uh, there's a time to move. <clears throat> and usually, if one is going to do that in a non-panicky way, uh, if one is going to move uh, with a sense of purpose in a particular direction, uh, this requires prior planning, uh, prior preparation, and rehearsal. So why am I telling you this? A number of years ago, uh, I was working for a, a government organization and I was part of a task force that was looking at pandemics, human pandemics, uh, I guess all pandemics are human, pandemics in general and uh, H1N1 in particular. That was a flu virus that people thought was going to go human to human and could potentially kill a whole bunch of people. And I learned a whole lot uh, when I was working on that. And one of the things I learned is that um, there is a pandemic coming eventually. Um, the scientists say that. You can read it in your word. Um, you know, if you're into the alternative media and stuff like that, some people think that this is going to be done on purpose to reduce the population or whatever. There's a pandemic coming eventually, and uh, so the H1N1 looked like a good choice for a pandemic, you know, the potential for, for going badly. And, and so a lot of actions were taken by our government uh, to prepare for that. And as you know, it, it turned out not to really be a whole lot of anything, but steps uh, were designed, rehearsed, and put in place for that. <clears throat> but really not a whole lot was put out to the American people. On what they could do and that's what I'm all about you know what can you do uh, to get ready there is a new virus out there it's uh, I think it's H7 and 9 uh, and it has the potential okay the potential uh, to go bad and, and to and to form into a pandemic that kills a lot of people very rapidly uh, you can you can read about it on the news I have not read enough about it yet after I do this video I'm actually gonna do some research and try and learn that the characteristics of this flu uh, that's going on but it, I guess it's in China or something I just read an article that Japan normally a calm and measured country has just passed some laws and regulations dealing with new type of flu um, so this this could go bad and it could go bad quickly and so to avoid panic we you know you me and, and those we care about need to think about it need to do some study and, and need to take some action I submit to you you need to take some action and so let me tell you something. Um, what I decided with my family was that uh, if the H1N1 had gone into a pandemic uh, state and started killing a lot of people, back then we thought this would probably happen. We would start seeing clusters uh, of people dying, and we thought it would probably happen in Indonesia, quite frankly, um, because they have a lack of uh, the ability to jump on something and stop it. And so we thought it would probably start there. And then I figured it would be a day or so um, before it got to our shores. And the personal uh, Fox plan was, I lived in the country uh, in Kansas at the time, we were just going to lock our gate, right? We were going to lock our front gate because this flu uh, was passed at handshaking distances. Um, and so if we could lock our gate and not let anyone onto High Prairie Acres, uh, our land there, and uh, not let anyone leave, we'd be good. Um, and we had enough stuff there in Kansas here. It's actually here in Kansas um, that we could live for a long time without having to leave our property. Well, I had a friend uh, who was in the military, as was his wife, and they knew that should this thing actually go pandemic, they would be called on to duty elsewhere. And they had a new kid, a new baby. And they had a, a nanny and everything and a, and a family care plan, but they didn't like where this was going because... Uh, the husband was on the task force with me and he could see the same things I could and so their plan was um, they were gonna drop their baby off with us early and we were gonna take care of their kid and um, until this thing ended and they went so far as to stock up at our house formula and diapers and things like that for their child uh, and back then I think the wisdom was that this flu would pass over and it would be in any given area for about three weeks uh, I think that's how it was it's been a couple years um, and then we had a plan uh, if he wanted his child back at, at any time what we would do is I would put his child because it was a baby in the car carrier go stick it the car carrier in my driveway retreat back into my house he would drive down my driveway pick up his child and leave all right so there's that 
Um, at Shofar Mountain, we're going to come up with some plans here in the next couple days on what Shofar Mountain is going to do, but it's probably going to be something similar. Uh, if this flu does go pandemic and does, you know, reach our shores, uh, which it will, if it goes pandemic, it'll reach our shores within a day, um, we're going to lock down Shofar Mountain. Nobody in, nobody out. Um, I suggest you consider what you're going to do. At what point do you just tell work, I can't come into work anymore? You know, it depends on your job. Back in 1917, the Spanish flu, I think they called it, um, which killed a lot of people. Do you know that in rural communities, the flu was passed by the mailman, right? He would put the mail in the box, the people would come out to their box and pick it up, and bam, they got the flu and they died. Um, and so no contact means no contact. And again, I've got to study this flu. I haven't studied it, um, but it, it'll probably be something where, you know, it has to be within handshaking distance to get the germs off of the person and uh, things like that. So start thinking about that. Do you have enough stuff to survive in place uh, Do you for a period of time? Probably a few weeks. Do you have uh, the ability to stay home? You know, maybe you're a firefighter or a police officer or something like that. What are you going to do? Man, I don't know. You know, that's, that's up to you. But you need to start thinking about this. Maybe you decide you're going to send your family somewhere. Um, but when it's time to act, it's going to be time to act on this. It's not going to be time to hem and haw and go, well, you know, it just, they, some people died in New York and L.A. And it'll probably take a while to get out here to central Missouri. N no, it won't. <laughs> not the way air travel is today. I was just flying. People go all over the place. Um, you know, you might want to start stocking up. We stocked up on Pedialyte uh, and Gatorade powder because a lot of people, when they die of the flu, um, they die of, uh, you know, dehydration and stuff. We, we made a whole bunch of, uh, which I still have, uh, elderberry tincture. Uh, I've got a good recipe for that that my brother Zach put together on my website. You can find that at uh, vikingpreparedness.com. And then just go to the forums and go to medical, and I think I've got it stickied up there. But you can read about how to make your own elderberry tincture, which supposedly works. I don't know. You know, we're going to try everything. Um, but have a plan. Have a plan to shelter in place. I submit you should have a plan to go into isolation. Uh, start thinking about it. Start preparing for it if you haven't already. Uh, maybe rehearse it. You know, maybe something that's like, well, hey, I'm not going to turn my mom and dad away when they show up five days into this thing. Well, then do you have a way to put them immediately into isolation? You know, maybe that's a shed in the backyard that's, you know, 100 feet away from the house and you've got it stocked with a toilet and water and food and yada yada and, uh, Maybe you can put them in this facility, if you will, uh, until the incubation period is over. My plan for H1N1 when it went viral was if that had to happen, um, I would put myself into isolation. I would go to work until what I thought was the last safe minute, and then I would put myself in isolation in my garage. I had a big garage, and I was going to live there for two times the incubation period. Didn't know what the incubation period was, but I figured by then we would. And so for if the incubation period was four days, I would have stayed in there, you know, for like a week and a half or something until I knew I was okay, and then I'd rejoin my family. Uh, so maybe you could set up something like that, a, a holding area for people. Um, but you need to start planning this stuff now because if it goes viral, you know, if it goes pandemic, it's going to happen fast. It's going to go everywhere. People's heads going to be spinning, and people won't be thinking rationally. So, hey, <laughs> I hope I see you out there, but not during a pandemic. God bless.